It all started with Mother Angelica. Born in 1923 in Canton, Ohio, Rita Rizzo knew poverty and suffering in an early age. Her parents' divorce filled May Rizzo with anxiety and depression, surrounding her six-year-old Rita with fear and isolation both at home and at school. Then at age 19, a miraculous healing from a recurring stomach ailment opened an entirely new world to Rita. She realized that God loved her personally and profoundly and answered this love by entering the poor clear nuns of perpetual adoration in Cleveland, Ohio, becoming Sister Mary Angelica of the Annunciation in 1945. If it was a cure that brought Mother Angelica to enter religious life, it would be a serious accident that launched her into a whole new adventure she could never even have dreamed of. The accident was a back injury which threatened to leave her paralyzed for the rest of her life. The night before her surgery, Mother Angelica made a promise to our Lord. I said, Lord, if you give me the grace to walk again, I'll build you a monastery in the south. The surgery was successful, and in 1962, Mother Angelica and a handful of nuns moved to their new home on the outskirts of Birmingham, Alabama to found the Monastery of Our Lady of the Angels. In the 1970s, Mother Angelica began to write small booklets of inspiration and encouragement in the Catholic faith. The booklets printed by the nuns themselves and distributed free of charge would find their way to every corner of America and beyond. Invitations to give talks and lectures followed, and then came videotapes and their broadcast through local television. And then there was that memorable afternoon in 1978, when Mother Angelica was struck by the small size yet powerful potential of a TV station in Chicago. And I said, Lord, I've got to have one of these. A few years later, with $200 in her hand and an unshakable trust in divine providence, Mother began to transform what was to have been the monastery garage into a TV studio. It was 1981 and the beginning of the Eternal Word Television Network, EWTN. Name of Jesus who is Lord, may His eternal word be proclaimed. Eternal Word Television Network, built for you. <laughs> EWTN began transmitting just four hours a day, but thanks to the generous and enthusiastic support of its family of viewers, by 1987, EWTN was firmly established as a 24-hour cable network in the United States. The next step came in 1992 with the launch of its radio service. At the touch of a button, EWTN instantly extended its reach to the entire globe, bringing Catholic radio programming to the farthest corners of the world. Three years later, EWTN gradually began expanding the scope of its television service as a number of satellite transmissions were launched in Europe, Latin America, and the Philippines. Today, using the latest technology, EWTN's television and radio programming is available around the clock and across the globe via cable and satellite, reaching millions of souls throughout the world. But we're not only on the air, we're also online. Since 1996, EWTN's own website has been offering a variety of internet services, including real audio and video, never more than a keystroke away. Let's take a look at some of the milestones in EWTN's history. On October 4, 1983, EWTN debuted Mother Angelica Live. September 1, 1987, our programming expanded to 24 hours a day. In February 1991, in response to the start of the first Gulf War, we began transmitting the live daily mass from Our Lady of the Angels Monastery. On December 28, 1992, EWTN Radio launched. On June 14, 1996, we began airing 24 hours of Spanish programming in Latin America. 
On September 4, 1996, The World Over Live debuted, followed by the debut of Life on the Rock on January 10, 1997. On September 5, 1997, The Journey Home debuted. And one year later, on September 7, 1998, our Spanish live show, Nuestra Fe in Vivo, debuted. Then on September 5, 2003, came Raymond Arroyo's exclusive Vatican interview with Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger. Less than two years later, Cardinal Ratzinger would be elected Pope Benedict XVI following the death of Pope John Paul II. And speaking of John Paul II, no review of EWTN's history would be complete without a look at the network's almost 25-year relationship with, as he is affectionately and prophetically called, John Paul the Great. Throughout most of his pontificate, EWTN would be the primary source of coverage for John Paul II's stupendous and unprecedented global papal visits. Let's take a look at just some of our coverage over the years. sad news of John Paul II's entrance into eternity came on April 2, 2005. It is very with a heavy heart that I report that at 9.37 Rome time, the Holy Father passed away. EWTN would then begin the most extensive coverage of Vatican events in its 25-year history. Interregnum coverage included the lie-in state and funeral of Pope John Paul II, daily masses from Rome, and complete conclave coverage. And finally, EWTN was there on April 19, 2005, when the words Habemus Papam rang out, proclaiming Pope Benedict XVI as the 264th successor to St. Peter. EWTN will continue to be your home for full coverage of all the major papal and Vatican events, from World Youth Days to canonizations to liturgical and seasonal events. in its earliest days, EWTN continues to operate its 24 hours a day, seven day a week broadcasts based solely on the generosity of its donors, while in turn offering programming free of charge via satellite, cable and broadcast TV and radio. EWTN's mission is to respond to the call for a new evangelization by putting the media at the service of the gospel. But behind the state-of-the-art facilities and intense activity of the staff is prayer and trust in divine providence. God's hand has always overshadowed every aspect of EWTN. Now that you know how EWTN got its start, let's take a look at the facility. Our tour begins at the front desk. Welcome to EWTN. One of the brothers will be with you shortly. From here we proceed down a hallway where much of the editing and operational equipment is located. EWTN now uses the latest digital editing systems to put together many of the programs that you see on the air. Just down the hall, you'll see the office where operators transcribe EWTN's programming. These transcripts are used for translations into other languages and also for closed captioning for the hearing impaired. Next door to transcription, is the audio suite where those translations are then recorded in multiple languages. This gives EWTN the ability to broadcast in Spanish, French, German, and other languages. Next are more editing suites and the main tape room where all programs are recorded. Near the tape room is the camera control room. This is where the cameras are monitored during studio production and the robotic cameras are controlled for the broadcasting of the daily mass. 
If you've visited the chapel, you may have noticed these cameras mounted on the walls. The robotic cameras that are used in live events from the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament in Hansville are controlled from this room as well. Moving along, you can see the file server, an all-digital, tapeless storage system that plays back our various program networks and also gives EWTN the capability to broadcast multiple satellite signals in many languages throughout the world. Across the hall, you'll see the console where we control satellite transmissions along with the digital archive that stores all pre-recorded programs. Also in this area is the quality control room. Programs that are sent to EWT and from outside sources are reviewed here to ensure the highest quality picture and sound. The last stop in this section is the room where all on-air programs are monitored 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Technical Operations Center this is where the file server is controlled so that each EWTN satellite network stays up and running. The dishes that send the signals up to each satellite are located behind the network building. More and more dishes have been added over the years to accommodate EWTN's global broadcasting efforts. We now go to the part of the facility that is most recognizable to our viewers, the studio. This is where most of our live and original programs are produced. Space is at a premium, so wall facades are often finished on both sides. Also, to maximize the use of the studio, several live show sets actually occupy the same area. This corner of the studio is constantly being transformed into sets for each new EWTN original series. Our set crew strives to make every new set unique and complementary to the theme of each series. Next to the studio is the main control room where the production staff keeps everything running smoothly. Papal visits, live events, as well as weekly EWTN live shows and pre-taped series are all directed from this area. From camera angles to audio levels to viewer call-ins, this is the heart of EWTN's behind the scenes activity. There are a few other places we'd like to highlight that you don't see on the regular network tour. In another part of the building is our online services department. This is where EWTN's website is constantly updated and maintained for the thousands of online visitors we get each day. When you call or write EWTN with a question or comment, you reach the viewer services department, which handles hundreds of incoming calls and letters every day. Those letters are processed by the EWTN mailroom, which also sends out our monthly program guide. The mailroom works closely with the print shop, which prints the program guide and other materials for the network. Another EWTN department that corresponds with many of our viewers is the Religious Catalog Fulfillment Center. If you order a holy reminder during the Religious Catalog show, this is where it is carefully packed and shipped. Another major facility is the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network, which is one of the largest shortwave operations in the world. Just 15 miles south of the main campus, EWTN Global Catholic Radio can be heard on AM and FM stations in the United States and on audio services internationally. Listeners can also pick us up on shortwave radio almost anywhere around the globe. Thanks for coming to EWTN. I hope you enjoyed your visit and please come again soon. That does it for our tour of EWTN's broadcast facilities.